Hey everybody, welcome back. So I am here with my flip through and review and very chatty thoughts on Alan Roberts' The Beauty of Horror 4 Creature Feature, another gorgeous coloring book. I know there are a lot of flip throughs of this right now. This is a very popular book for a million reasons. Um, and you could see a flip through anywhere, but I, if you know, if you've been with me for a while, you know, I'm a huge horror fan, um, very into horror movie culture, and I have a lot of thoughts on this book, <laughs> a lot of observations, and um, just in general, I really wanted to do an in-depth review of this book uh, and flip through it. And I know that Claire, of Color with Claire, she also did a, um in-depth review of it, and I haven't watched her video yet. I um, was holding back because I didn't want anything she said to influence me on my thoughts or anything like that. But when I am done filming this, I am going to watch her video because I'm curious to see her take on it. And I've already seen some images that she's colored from it, and they are simply gorgeous. Um, so we will get started. I am going to uh, flip through and we'll just get started. So it's like the other Beauty of Horror coloring books as in it has a slip cover, you know, or a dust jacket on it that has the red foiling. Um, you can remove that if you want to um, and take it off when you color. I do. Also, you can color inside of the cover. Here is um, an example of that. And I'll actually take it off the back, too, so that you can see the other part. So we'll have that off while we flip. So here is the entire... Now, I apologize also because my the way my um, tripod is, I can't get the whole thing in at once. So we're just going to kind of do that. So we'll fold this up. And we'll put it out of the way. And then I will get started. And I apologize to you for the glare that I have. Um, the sun is coming in from on my window. So, um, where we have the title page. It's like a, a mandala frame type thing. Not a mandala, but a frame type thing with some Freddy Krueger gloves, a Jason Voorhees mask, and a chainsaw that I'm assuming is probably a reference to Leatherface from the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Um, then we have the uh, nameplate page here, and um, the other page also has a bit of imagery that you can color on it with the printing. And I want to see, actually, if I can turn this just a little bit, and we're going to see if that makes a difference, if I can fit a little bit more in. So this on the left side is the um, color key, color key like your prompts, things that you're looking for. And this page has the, um, basically telling you that Guliana is going to the movies with the little poem and everything. Um, and you're supposed to look for the props, the movie props. Now I feel like it's crooked. I don't know. Anyways, we'll just do the best we can. Okay? Let me adjust one more time. All right. So the first page we have is a scene from The Exorcist. Obviously, everybody knows that scene where Reagan's head spins around. And over here, we have the statue of the demon Pazuzu. We have Father Marin and Father Karras, who were performing the exorcism. Um, you also have your little Hellraiser cube down here. I think that's one of the, the things you're supposed to look for. There's a saw. So some different, different items there. Reagan also has, if you notice, the crucifix in her hand um, that gives reference to one of the more uh, infamous scenes in that movie that I'm not going to talk about right here, right here because it's not appropriate for a video. Um, but you guys that have seen The Exorcist know what I'm talking about. Uh, and then The Exorcist con continues over here where we have the comical Exercise Your Demons with the Spider Walk 3000 treadmill. 
the spider walk was um, taken out of the uh, theatrical version of The Exorcist, but they put it back in um, later on. I think that was in like the late, I don't know what year that was. But was it the late 90s or early 2000s? Early 2000s sometime. And I think that they re-released it at the theaters and they put that spider walk in it where she comes backwards down the stairs. Um, and here we also have kind of a funny one of giving the werewolf a haircut, right? Um, Edward Scissorhands. I'm assuming that's whole, kind of with the reference. It's like a double reference because it's Freddy uh, Krueger gloves. But in a way, it's like Edward Scissorhands, too, because remember he cut all the, uh, the hair of all the pets and stuff like that. So... All right, and here we have the movie theater scene. Um, so I'll name the characters for you. Obviously, you know this is Chucky, and there we have Hannibal Lecter. We have the creature from the Creature from the Black Lagoon. We have Michael Myers. We have the Wolfman. We have the Nun, and I believe this is supposed to be the Ghoul from London After Midnight. Um, which was, a, it's like a last movie. I, I think it's, a, it's not in release. Nobody has, has seen it. Um, you can't watch it anywhere, but they have still photographs from it. So I think that is what that's a reference to. Um, on this side, we have Jason Voorhees. We have, um, Phantom of the Opera, uh, some kind of sea monster. <laughs> uh, we have the scream guy. We have Leatherface, we have Freddy Krueger, we have Frankenstein, um, and we have the Metaluna mutant from this island, Earth. Next, we're moving on to Psycho. We have Guliana taking over the Bates Motel, the Psycho House. And we have Norman Bates' mother knitting her number one son. <laughs> Followed by Carrie at the senior prom. She has her bucket of blood down below. I've already seen this image colored. It's really, really cute. We have reference to Alien Aliens um, with Sigourney Weaver. I think this is one in number four. I think when she... I think carried the child in in her um, and the face suckers are all through here in the background and then the pest control of killing off the alien all right to me this is another one of these like double meanings um, I think this is a reference to the usual suspects um, movie but we have got Number one is Bella Lugosi as Dracula. Number two is Max Shrek as Nosferatu. Uh, Gary Oldman is his version of Dracula. And then number four is, I believe, Christopher Lee. Um, you know, who's very... I would say Christopher Lee and Bella Lugosi are the ones that are most commonly known to play uh, Dracula. Um, if you have never seen Nosferatu, it is a silent... Um, a Dracula movie, and it's really good. It's really, really, really good. Turner Classics plays it a lot close to Halloween, but it's a good one for sure. And next we have Pet Cemetery. Guliana with, I'm assuming, Church, maybe, from the Pet Cemetery movie. Next we have a double page spread of The Invisible Man getting his bandages pulled off by Guliana's little pail. And there we go with the Hellraiser cube again, down there, making an appearance. Here is the Friday the 13th at the end. We see that jump scare scene that is so famous in that movie where she survived the attack at Camp Crystal Lake and is relaxing in the boat, tranquilly running her hand through the water, and then whoop, there comes Jason. <laughs> and here we have her buddy also fishing, uh, maybe in Camp Crystal Lake too, we don't know, and he has caught a gill man from Creature from the Black Lagoon. 
Next we have reference to The Beast from 20,000 Fathoms. This is probably the only movie I haven't seen from this whole book. Um, I have, we do own it, but I have not watched it yet. So he's changed it to Guliana's Pet from 20,000 Fathoms. All right, next we have some Evil Dead reference going on here. So here is um, Ash's girlfriend in the basement after she got chained in and possessed. And here is Ash, where he has substituted his missing hand for a chainsaw. The satanic uh, buck that's up on the wall has become possessed. And um, there we have the Book of the Dead, the skin book. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, in his boomstick. We can't forget the boomstick, right? So these are from Evil Dead. Next is the birds, which I love the birds. The birds is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite movies of all time. I actually got a chance to go meet Tippi Hedren, um, who you will recall is in The Birds. She's the star of The Birds. She was here at a local theater in Detroit hosting a screening of The Birds. So I have a Birds Barbie. Um, it's the Tippi Hedren version of Barbie with the pink suit on, and she's being attacked by, or is it green? Her suit. I can't remember. She's being attacked by the birds, and she signed my Barbie, and um, I got to meet her, and that was really, really cool. That was a really cool fangirl moment for me. All right. Next we have Hellraiser. So there we have Pinhead with his um, Rubik's Cube. <laughs> and here we have the Cinnabon. Hell needs frosting. <laughs> very funny. Very, very, very funny. Okay. Next, we have The Thing. I'm so delighted to see a reference to this movie in this book. So, um, here we have The Thing, uh, John Carpenter's version of it from the 80s, or was it the late 70s? I can't remember. Um, Keith would know. This is one of his favorite movies, and that's how I knew when I saw this in here that he would love to have this book. So, here is McCready's Flamethrower. Of course, McCready played by Kurt Russell, who is wonderfully bearded in that movie. <laughs> so, so handsome. Um, but yeah, that is the thing. Uh, make sure I'm not skipping a page. And next we have Stanley Kubrick's version of The Shining. And there is Jack. And of course, we all know that all work and no play make Jack a dull boy. And here is when he's coming through the bathroom to get to Wendy, saying, here's Johnny. I love The Shining. I love, 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 love that movie. I will watch it again and again and again. And you know, in October, AMC runs their all their horror fest. You know, um, they run the horror movies all month long. And they play The Shining frequently. I mean, sometimes it's like almost a daily thing. And I will stop if it's on and I will just leave it on in the background. I love that movie so much. It is a perfect example to me of more subtle horror. It's sophisticated horror. It is not in your face. Um, it's quiet. It goes through. It's atmospheric. And all of a sudden, bam, you're like hit with the horror hardcore. And then it goes back to being normal again. And, and you know, things are slightly off and, you know, it's a little bit weird, but everything's going to be okay. And, and it's subtle and quiet again. And then bam, I love movies like that. I love that kind of horror. That's probably my favorite genre of horror. What we refer to as like the slow burn movie. Um, I just, I really, 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 really like that kind of horror. So The Shining is one of my favorites. I never get tired of that. And this is also a scene from The Shining uh, toward the end when all of the party goers decide to make their appearance um, and they come out in the hotel and all the blood comes, you know, out of the uh, the elevator doors and everything. So here we have Samara from The Ring. I remember when The Ring came out, it was so, like, everybody was so horrified by it. And it was pretty scary. I mean, I liked that movie a lot. Um, it's based on a Japanese movie, Ringu. Um, and the Japanese version, I believe, is 
scarier than the Americanized, which is often the case when it comes to Japanese horror that the American studios remake. Um, the Japanese just have a really good uh, way of being super creepy. <laughs> they know they know what to do with their ghosts to make them super creepy. Um, this is Piranha, and then there's of course the cute fishes which I can't remember their names see that's how I am I can I know all the horror names but I don't know the cute fish is it Dory I don't know I don't know um here's a reference to child's play of course with Chucky Guliana wants to be friends till the end and here is Chucky and he has mangled up Woody from Toy Story All right, next we have probably the reference that delight, <laughs> delighted me. There's two movies in this book that made me so happy. And this, I know it's, I'm such a weirdo. So this is from Hereditary. I think this is the one that a lot of people wouldn't get because Hereditary wasn't as mainstream horror as a lot of these other movies are. Um, and this is probably the most famous, uh, infamous scene from Hereditary. We have the telephone pole over here with the symbol of payment, the demon on it, um, and here is Guliana's head, which is a reference to the girl Charlie in the movie who is beheaded when she has her head hanging out the window and they hit a telephone pole and her head goes, <laughs> goes flying. Um, yeah, and then they flash back to it on the side of the road. You don't really see that happen in the movie, so yes, there are spoilers in this uh, video, obviously, but you don't really see her get decapitated. Um, they just kind of allude to it, and then the next day they show her head laying on the side of the road with the flies on it next to the... You know, near near the telephone pole. Hereditary is another one of my favorite movies. Very, very similar to The Shining in the fact that it is a slow and almost um, like a psychological drama, basically. Um, and then all of a sudden, when the horror starts coming at you in Hereditary, it comes hard and fast. And Hereditary is not for everybody. I don't recommend that everybody go see that movie. You know, it's not like I would say... Just like that, I would not recommend for everybody to see Hereditary. Um, it takes a certain type of person to appreciate a movie like that. Um, it's pretty gruesome um, in some instances. The end is quite shocking, and it can be disturbing to some people. But I really, really liked it. Again, Toni Collette plays the mom. She is awesome, awesome, awesome in that movie. I mean, she, of course, horror movies never get nominated for Academy Awards ever. But, um she deserved one for that movie. She just was phenomenal in that movie. Her acting range was insane. Another delight that I found in this movie is Predator. I never expected to see anything like that show up in this, so that's really, really nice. Double page spread here of uh, Predator. And there's one of those Ouija, Ouija board planchettes uh, in here. Um, here we have uh, ice hockey being played at Camp Crystal Lake. Jason is the goalie. Okay, so we got a couple things going on in this one over here. Obviously, this is it. Uh, Pennywise. Pennywise is wearing Freddy Krueger's glove. He also is carrying Negan's bat from The Walking Dead. Um, and has some alien on the back of him. Some alien growth, like, on the back of him. Also looks to me like he's wearing Leatherface's outfit from Texas Chainsaw Massacre here. And he's got Jason's mask on for Friday the 13th. So this is like a... Um, a page full of reference, you know, all different kinds of uh, stuff going on. Here we have Michael Myers, kind of a comical um, page with him in his uh, coveralls and then him in his undies <laughs> the night he did laundry. We have Poltergeist here, obviously Carol Ann with the there here scene, and this is a, another 
like double meaning this is from Poltergeist 2. We have Tangia who is the psychic that wants to clean the house and save Carol Ann. And here is the evil preacher. Um, and I always imitate him all the time <laughs> to Keith. I'm always like, are you lost child? <laughs> I love that guy. He's so creepy. When I was, uh, when this movie came out, Poltergeist 2, I went to the theater and saw it. And with my friend, Julie, I think, we were the only two in the whole theater watching it. Oh, it was great. So creepy. He is such a creepy character. All right. Now, this is the other movie that made me love this book so much. This is from They Live. Um, they Live is a classic, classic horror film about aliens that have taken over and in integrated themselves into our society. They look just like us. Unless you have these special glasses on where you can see what they really look like. And all over they have like these signs up that say like obey, consume, buy, sleep, um, do not question, conform. And I like how he's put color. So like when you're watching the news, say in that movie, you know, people are home watching the news. They don't know that the newscast caster is one of the aliens and and then you put the the uh, glasses on and you can see that there's hidden messages behind the news telling all the humans to obey conform um it has rowdy 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 piper in it it's just a great great movie i love that movie i knew keith would love the references uh here fabulous 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 choices good job on alan for alan robert to put that in there for us it's so much fun Okay, this is Godzilla vs. King Kong. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward there. Here we have Jaws. His Ghoulie and his little buddy in Roy Scheider's um, character as the Cheap Brody. And there she is in the jawbone of Jaws. Here we have Texas Chainsaw Massacre, um, where they were consuming people, putting them in the chili, uh, the Texas Chili Cook-Off, where they say, I don't exactly know the truth behind that, um, but it was based on a case where they say that somebody committed murders and got rid of the bodies by putting them in a uh, chili, in a chili cook-off competition. Oops, didn't mean to hit the camera. Here we have a bub from uh, Day of the Dead. The zombie with his brains. And there's the Hellraiser cube again. Amityville. Made my day to see this movie referenced in this book. Love it, love it, love it. The Amityville Horror is one of my favorite movies from the 70s. Horror movies, also one of my favorite books. Um, I know there's a lot of people say that it, it was a hoax and everything um but I loved that movie and I loved that book I read that book probably shoot, I can't even remember how many times um I loved that when I was I was probably too young to be reading that book when I read it but um I really 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 enjoyed it and this is another reference to Amityville with the windows that look like eyes all right, we have American Werewolf in London. <laughs> These scared me so bad. The soldiers that looked like werewolves in that dream sequence frightened me so much when I saw that movie. Um, I was probably yeah, middle schooler, no, no, junior high when I saw that movie. And um, that scene really, really frightened me. It stuck with me. And to this day, when we watch that movie, I see that it kind of bothers me. I don't know why exactly. And here is, uh, you know, stay off the moors. They were, they warn them, stay off the moors. They don't. Look what happens. Mm -hmm. Look what happens. Here we have Godzilla. Guliana shaking her fist because her car got squished. Saw. Not much in the Saw movies. Um, Guliana riding the tricycle with uh, Jigsaw. Yeah, I'm not, I'm just not much into the Saw movies. This one is Stranger Things. Kind of fun that they, he put that in there. Modern day pop culture. 
we have a lot going on in this. We've got the, the pig masks. We've got the gloves with the knives. We have the jigsaw. We have the hatchet. We have popcorn. We have the planchette. So lots of different stuff going on in that mandala. Same thing over here. We have Guliana sailing off with her SS Guliana, reference to it, of course, with the SS Georgie, and here is Pennywise. Alright, I thought this would be funny, so I'm showing this to you guys here. This is obviously the Frankenstein and Bride of Frankenstein. Um... I love this. I love this. Love this. If you know me, you know why. I am a Bride of Frankenstein fan, and I have to show you guys this. So this is my wedding cake topper. And as soon as I saw that page, I was like, are you kidding me? It's just like my wedding cake topper. So cool. How cool is that? Oh, I love it. So that was what my cake looked like. <laughs> And then there was the Frankenstein and the Bride of Frankenstein uh, dancing in front of that window. And so when I saw this page, I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. So, and I actually sent Alan Robert a message <laughs> about this um, and showed him the picture of my wedding cake topper. And I was like, I love it so much. Thank you so much. Okay, so this is, and he did reply to me, so that was cool. Um, this is The Thing. And then the last one is uh, King Kong here with Guliana. And then the rest, here we have like a little bit of everything. And then we have your color your own pages, test your palettes, and uh, the last props, a list of all the rest of the books, and that is the end. So, I think you guys know pretty much what I'm going to say. That is really glary. I'll put this over it. Maybe that'll help. I don't know. No, it doesn't help. Um, I think you guys know what I'm going to say. I absolutely love this book. I think this book is a horror... It's a love letter to horror fans that color. Um, I just absolutely love it. He outdid himself with this. Um, one of my issues with horror coloring books is that there have been a lot of them popping up lately on um, Amazon, and they're all like Chucky, Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers. You know what I mean? And it's kind of like, uh, you know, that's, yeah, those are horror movies, but for people that are really lead a horror, you know, a life where they're true horror fans and that's their favorite movie genre and stuff like that, there's so much more out there. So when I saw this book, and it had references to some of my favorite movies, the Shining, Hereditary, They Live, um, The Thing. It just really, really, really excited me. And I think it's super, super cool that he did that. I mean, um, anybody can crank out a book with Jason wallpapers and, you know, pictures of Michael Myers and coveralls. But that that's not interesting to me. I don't want those books. I'm not into those books. I was so delighted to see scenes from movies that I truly, truly, truly love. Um, I wish he could have put one in there from The Fog. <laughs> that would have made me, like, super, super happy. But um, I'm not complaining. Maybe he'll do another one for us. That would be absolutely fantastic if he did. Um, yeah, but I love this book. Um, I, I, I just think it's great, and I really appreciate it. As a horror fan, I really appreciate the range of movies and material that he included in this book. It's just wonderful. And um, I also want to say, I know that horror is not for everybody. I know that there are people that firmly believe that horror coloring books, horror content has no place in the coloring world, that, that coloring is for stress release and happiness, and they don't understand why we include horror in that. But everybody likes things differently. And um, for those people, I guess because recently I saw in one of the groups there was some brouhaha, and I actually commented, and usually I don't, I keep my, my fingers to myself, but I guess it was because it was something that meant so much to me, the horror coloring, um, 
somebody said that these books should be banned. They said that um, they're vile and disgusting. That was their exact words. That they should have trigger warnings before they're allowed to post anything. Um, and, you know, that kind of struck a chord with me because I hate cancel culture. I hate it. I hate it. There are things that I don't like. There's TV shows and there's movies that are show things that I don't like, that I don't agree with, that I personally might find offensive. But I don't think that those things should be canceled just because I don't like them or I don't agree with them. I just don't watch them. I don't listen to them. I don't partake it of them. Um, I hate cancel culture. I absolutely hate it. And although I realize that not everybody likes this kind of content and it's not for everybody, particularly, like I said, the movie Hereditary, which could be disturbing to very many people. Um, it, sometimes things, life just happens and things upset us. And that's the way life is. Life is always going to bring things to us that upset us. And part of being human, part of making it, part of becoming a strong person is learning to deal with it. Um, and I'm not trying to get all serious on you guys, but like, okay, I'm going to use this as, a, as an example. After I lost my son, I had a hard time um, being on Facebook, scrolling through and seeing pictures of babies. Um, it really bothered me, you know, but what am I going to do? Do I expect everybody that's on my Facebook to stop posting pictures of their babies because I'm going through something? Of course not. Of course not. You know, and, uh, a lot of times I had people on my Facebook that had just had babies or, you know, they, they were posting pictures and I just chose to, I like, I snoozed those people for 30 days. I unfollowed them for a little while because I still want to be friends with those people, but I wasn't in a place where I wanted to see that stuff right now. But did I say, please stop posting pictures of babies? You know what I mean? Um, it's just, it's just like that. You just have to learn when you go through difficult things in your life, you have to learn to overcome them. You have to try to get some kind of a strength and find a inner strength. And you can't expect things to be, the whole world is not going to cater to your needs. It's just not. And so when I see people, you know, that, that say that these books should be banned and that they're offensive and that they're disgusting and everything, I get that they're not your cup of tea, but you know, they're my cup of tea and obviously other people's because this book is very popular. So I just think people have to step back and stop being so, you know, just cancel culture, you know, cancel culture is terrible. It's not the way to go. It's just a bad thing. Cancel the cancel culture. <laughs> right. So yeah, I don't, I don't know. I wasn't trying to be all serious and everything. Um, but it's just brought up a lot of, um, thoughts. This book brought up a lot of thoughts to me. And, you know, like Deborah Muller, um, you guys know that I love her. I'm a, a moderator for her group. We have, we're friends and she has some really like dark content, even though she does it in a funny way in her Halloween books, you know, like she has severed heads and little cute girls standing there with butcher knives that are dripping blood and hecked up, uh, stuffed animals and things like that. And, there are a lot of people that don't like that. And they, she told, she just um, actually told me that uh, people message her and they ask her, why is she drawing that content? Why is she um, putting those kind of coloring books out there? And she's like, because they're funny and I enjoy, she enjoys it. And pe people like me and others, there's lots of others out there that enjoy coloring it. And, and we see the, the humor in it, the dark humor in it. Um, it's, you know, we we have 8 million coloring books with kittens and puppies and um, flowers and leaves and everything. And there's a very small sliver of horror coloring out there. And um, I just don't think that should be taken away from us. I think we should be able to enjoy our little slice of the horror coloring pie. <laughs> So that's it, you guys. That's just my opinion. That's my thoughts on everything right now. Um... I really, really like this book. I really enjoy it. And thank you, Alan Roberts, so much for creating it for us. Um, like I said, I truly do feel like it's a love letter to um, coloring his coloring horror fans. I just, I just absolutely am thrilled with it. Um, it's delightful. So I'll put a link to um, this book on Amazon in the description section below, although I'm sure you already have it. And um, uh, I am an Amazon affiliate, obviously, so if you... Uh, 
make a purchase of it, you know, I'll receive a small profit. But th the book is so wonderful. It's just so, so wonderful. So let me know what your thoughts are if you stuck with me till the end of this long-winded flip-through and review of um, Beauty of Horror 4, Creature Feature. Um, yeah, just let me know what you guys think. I'm curious to know if everybody likes it. And I'm curious to know what you guys think about the horror coloring in general. So, um, yeah, that's it. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a ghoulishly delightful day. Mwah.